What is love? I'm going to talk to you about love this morning, but about the love for missions. If you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13. Most of you know this uh, chapter of Scripture, perhaps by heart. <clears throat> But I only want to read the first three verses. The whole chapter, sometimes memorize it, uh, whatever. First Corinthians, chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, which is love, the word love, I have become a sign and brass, or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profit me nothing. Almighty God, how thankful we are for this another day in which you give it to us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we've come here for no other purpose but to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help us to get our eyes off of the things of this old world and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your growing grace. Father, I want to come this morning just simply saying thank you. Thank you for what you've done in and through this church. I can remember the many, many years ago when we started with only two people. But now we're getting ready to build. Lord God, I thank you and I praise you for what you've done and what you're going to do. But my prayer this morning is this. If there is one here this morning who has never truly opened up their heart, confessed their sins, and invited you to come in and save their soul, that they will do that this day, right now now before this service is over with. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll speak to the hearts of Christians and help them to see and to understand that you've left them here on this earth for a purpose. And that purpose is to serve you and do your will. Forgive us, Lord God, where we failed you. And help us to be better tomorrow than we are today. And we ask all of these things in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I really want to talk to you about mission work. <coughs> Dave, our son-in-law, who is, he's not feeling well today, he's not here, but his niece is leaving this week to go on a mission trip to China. And we've been praying for her as she goes. But I, I want to just talk to you about uh, mission work and what it means. You know, during the summer months, we tend to forget about missions. You know, we, don't, we have no Annie Armstrong, no Lottie Moon, and all of those things. But mission work, listen, is a vital role in every church. It's always been in this church, Friendship Baptist Church. Now we must pray earnestly for missions and for our missionaries. We have, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention has missionaries around the world. Many of them in hard, hard places. And they need your support and they need your prayer. We must be willing to pay the way for those who are called to go to missions. 
we must be willing to sin and we must be willing to go ourselves if need be. I know you're what you're saying. I know what you're thinking. See, I can understand you're saying, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. I'm 89 years old. You want me to go to missions? <laughs> well, you may not be able to go, but let me just simply say this. You may not be able to go to China or Japan or any other place or Africa or where have you, but mission work is not always in China or Africa. Mission work can be done right here in Sun City Center. It can be done in Waimama, Riverview, Ruskin, all of these places. You know, sometimes we tend to think of missions as being somewhere way off, but mission work can be done really wherever you're at. But missionary work, mission work of any kind, is a work of love. Because, listen, we carry the message of love wherever we go. The gospel, by the way, is God's love story. When you go, you witness, you talk to someone, you tell them the, about God's great love story. The Bible, by the way, is God's love letter to me. It's God's love letter to you. And it's God's love letter to the world. We need to be able to take it. I really think the Gideon organization, because they are taking the Bible, the Word of God, around the world today. We need to pray also for them. But mission work is really about love. And I'm going to say three things about it this morning. First of all, to love missions, you've got to love people. You know, there's a danger, you see, of becoming mechanical about missions. We tend to focus on the outward things. You hear people talk about, you know, all of these things are going on around the world. You listen to the news media about Africa and the Middle East and all those things that are happening there. People are starving. They have no clean water, all that. We get caught up in that. But mission work without love is worthless. Many go on missionary journeys. Listen, many churches, and there's nothing wrong with this. Many churches today, they go on missionary journeys and to different places around the world. But there's no love. Yeah, it's great. There's, it's a wonderful thing to go somewhere and build a house for poor to feed the poor. Do all of those things. That's wonderful. But I'm telling you this. You can go, and if you go without love, it's fruitless. Many people today. Well, you know, you hear people, they say, well, I'll go. I'll go. I'll teach English. You can go and teach English, but listen to me, and I bear a friend without love. It's just a noise. That's all it is. We as God's children must go, and we must love people as we go. We have to love people. I hear people today say, well, i tell you one thing. I cannot love those people. Cannot love this group. Cannot love that group. Cannot. God wants you to love people. You must love people. Second thing is, you to love missions is to love souls. You know, some only care about the outward deeds of people. Well, we know that people need food, they need housing. By the way, I just heard on the news that uh, in the United States of America, can you believe this? In the land of plenty, 45 million people are homeless. What? <clears throat> That's right here where we live, my dear friend. I can remember when I was a young boy. You know what? Churches, churches took care of the needy of the community. Well, we come so far, we give that job to the government. 
I don't have to explain it anymore. <laughs> you figure it out yourself. <laughs> Something went wrong, didn't it? Hmm. You know, it, it, it's a wonderful thing to be concerned, you know, about the physical needs of, of people. That is truly important. I had a good, years ago I had a good friend who went to the little country of Chad in, in uh, North Africa, Africa. Now he went over there to dig wells to provide fresh water for the people. But you know what he did? He took his Bible with him. And as he dug those wells and provided water for people, he told them about the greatest story on the earth of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he had done. Probably, I don't know how many if any was saved, but I know he did it. And that's wonderful and great. By the way, Jesus stressed the importance of the soul, you remember, in Mark 8, 36. He asked, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. When you go, when you give, whatever you do, you must love the souls of individuals. Mission shouldn't major on winning lost souls for Christ. That's what it's all about, you see. <laughs> A lot of people today will say, I don't care if people go to hell. Have you ever heard anyone say that? I heard a guy say that just the other day, and I thought, my lands, buddy, why don't you say something to him? He's bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about the Middle East people. I don't care if they go to hell. I want to tell you something this morning, my dear friends. And mark this down. Our Heavenly Father cares about a lost soul. He cares so much, He sent His only Son into this world. He might die and give His life for the lost souls of man. Oh my, my. How about the Son? God the Son, Jesus Christ, He cares for lost souls. He cares so much that he went to the cross. He shed his blood on the cross for you and for me. For lost sinners. The Holy Spirit, by the way, God the Holy Spirit also cares about lost souls. <laughs> he calls lost sinners to repentance. The Holy Spirit, he calls lost sinners to to repentance. And if he's calling you this morning, please respond. The question is this. What do you care? Do you care enough to cross the street and tell your neighbor that Jesus loves them? That's mission work, my friend. I don't know. <laughs> On Tuesday, George gave me a list. Four of that list for me to visit was right here on El Rancho. I had a couple of good visits there. Wonderful. One guy said, yeah, I come by your church there. I see that. I read your sign. He was interested in what we put on that sign. <laughs> oh, he said, I read that. I like what you put up there. I said, listen, you need to come on up. We have something to say inside too. Amen. <laughs> uh, he didn't promise me he'd come. But you see, that's what mission work is all about. A lot of people right here, a lot of people here don't even know who their neighbors are. One guy said to me, he said, I tell you what, People move in and out in my neighborhood so fast I can't keep up with them. Don't you think that's a mission for you? Huh? People moving in and out. 
People coming from the north down here to Florida, sunny, sunny Florida. What a mission field this is. God has put you here to witness and talk to those people. Be a missionary. Be a missionary. Go and tell them about Jesus. I don't, you know, there's just all kind of new people coming here. They need the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me go a little farther. Most of you say, well, you know, I'm crippled, I can't get out, I can't do this, you know, I know how you feel. I got a cane and I'd like to sell it or give it to somebody, but I can't get rid of it. Let me ask you this. How about your children? Have you told your children the greatest love story in the world? Have you told them about Jesus? Well, how about your grandchildren? Have you told your grandchildren that Jesus loves them? That he loves them so much that he went to Calvary's cross and died for them? I know it's not easy. I got grandchildren. They want to talk about everything under the sun except, you know. Some people say, well, they won't even listen to me. You know, it could be that you left out the most important thing. You know what it is? What are we talking about? Love. love. Perhaps you left that out. You need to love your children and you need to love your grandchildren. Some of you got great grandchildren. Love them too. <laughs> well, mission work involves loving people. It involves loving lost souls. But I want to tell you, to love missions, you've got to love the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to love him with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know, that's exactly what Moses told the children of Israel as they're getting ready to go in to the promised land that God said, keep my commandments. What is a commandment? Well, listen, you remember about you How many of you know the Great Commission? You should. Matthew 28, 18 20. It says, go into all the world. Go to tell, to baptize, to teach. Teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And you're to go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to do. Telling them. Telling them about Jesus. You know, I believe the Lord calls every Christian to witness. Acts 1.8. You know what it says? We're to witness right here in Sun City Center. We're to witness in Ruskin. My mama. We're to witness in the <coughs> Riverview in the state of Florida, in the United States of America, and to the rest of the world. Now, I thank God that we are part of a, a congregation that believes in giving to missions. I, I cannot say it enough. You give and you do a wonderful job in doing that. But sometimes people will give to missions and give to certain things, but they have no love for people. You know, I wonder, you know, how a person feels if he said, well, I, I'm giving my money to send our missionaries, and, but I really don't love those people, those Muslims. I just cannot stand them. I wonder, my dear friends, how that missionary over there in those places feels. When people say that, 
God loves them as much as He loves you. He died for them as well as He died for you. We need to remember that. You see, if you don't love people, if you don't love their souls, if you don't love Jesus, oh, you're not going to be able to do very much in mission work. Mm. The question is, do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you love Him enough? Yeah, people say, oh, I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love to sing that. Oh, how I love Jesus. But they don't love Jesus enough to tell their neighbor about Jesus. Let me ask you three questions here. Do you really love Jesus, love people? Don't answer. Nah. Do you really love people? Some, some, listen, there, there's people who can't even stand their wives. Can't stand their I'm asking you the question, do you love people? Do you love lost souls? Do you love lost people enough to pray for them? To go talk to them? To witness to them? To tell them about Jesus Christ? And what He did for them on Calvary's cross. Most of all, my dear friends, listen to me now. Do you really love Jesus? Do you really love Jesus? Oh, yeah, you love to sing about Jesus. You love to talk about Jesus. But do you really, truly love Jesus? That brings up another question. If you really, truly love Jesus, do you love Him enough to demonstrate your love for Him to other people so that they might come to know Jesus and tell others about Him. <laughs> now here's the thing. In order to truly love people, and to love lost souls, you must love the Lord Jesus Christ. And to truly love Jesus, you must be saved. You must know Him. Have Him in your heart, your soul, and your mind. And then, you can go to work as a missionary. But you cannot do that unless you have Him in your heart and he's in control of your life a lot of people say to me pastor listen I, I just don't know how to witness I don't know how to tell someone about Jesus let me tell you something surrender your life completely to him let the Holy Spirit take control of your life and when you go you may not know what to say or what, but the Holy Spirit does and he'll help you. And you'll be able to witness. And you'll be a missionary. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. For this time that we can talk about mission work. This church is a missionary church. We believe in missions. And we want to be missionaries. And we want to do what we know that you have called each one of us to do. But sometimes we become lax. Sometimes we, we begin to say, oh, I've done my part, or I've, uh, I want somebody else to do it, or what have you. But Lord, you've left us here on this earth, and we're here to serve you and to be and do what you'd have us to be and do. Lord God, my prayer this morning is this. If there's one here who has never truly 
given her heart to you, I pray that right now as the Holy Spirit speaks to their hearts, that they'd open up their heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save my soul. I confess my sins. I want to be yours. And I want to serve you. And Father, this morning, my prayer is that you'll take this old boy and use him in whatever capacity that you want to use me and that I'll be faithful in serving and doing your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going